Hi, and welcome to Ket's Book. In this video, I'm going to show you an easy and reliable way to draw Lewis diagrams of ions and polyatomic ions. We'll go through examples such as quicklime and smelling salts. If you already know how to draw a Lewis structure of a molecule, drawing a Lewis diagram of a polyatomic ion is fairly straightforward. However, if you need a refresher of simple Lewis diagrams, you might want to watch this other video of mine first. An ion is a particle that has a charge because it has gained or lost one or more electrons, so we need to add or remove electrons based on the charge of the ion. Quicklime is composed of calcium oxide, which is an ionic compound of calcium 2 plus ions and oxide 2 minus ions. The positive 2 charge of calcium tells us that calcium has lost 2 electrons. Calcium, which is in the second column of the periodic table, has two valence electrons as an atom. If it loses two electrons to become positively charged, it now has zero valence electrons. Technically speaking, the eight 3s and 3p electrons, which were previously core, become valence electrons, but we normally leave the cation with zero dots around it. The negative two charge of oxygen tells us that oxygen has gained two electrons. An oxygen atom has six valence electrons, so after it gains two more, it has eight valence electrons. This is a simple example, but the principle of gaining or losing electrons is exactly how we will tackle polyatomic ions. Let's start by drawing the Lewis structure of ammonium carbonate, which is known as smelling salts and was traditionally used to help someone recover from fainting. Let's look at the two ions individually. Ammonium has the formula NH4+. First, count all the valence electrons in the formula. Nitrogen has five valence electrons and each hydrogen has one electron. Next, add or subtract the number of electrons gained or lost by the ion. Since this is a cation with a positive one charge, it has lost one electron, so we subtract one from our valence electrons, giving us a total of eight valence electrons. Next, the central atom is typically the element that there is only one of, or the element that tends to form the most bonds, which in this case is nitrogen. After that, draw single bonds between the central atom and the other atoms. Since each bond is the sharing of two electrons, we have used eight valence electrons to form single bonds. There are no more electrons for lone pairs or double bonds. That means that this is the correct structure of ammonium. To indicate that this is a polyatomic ion, the entire structure can be put inside square brackets and the charge is written at the top right. Sometimes the square brackets are omitted. In that case, the charge is typically written next to the atom or atoms with non-zero formal charge. If you would like to know more about that, be sure to check out my video, Formal Charges Made Easy. Let's complete the Lewis structure of smelling salts by drawing carbonate, which is CO3 2 minus. First, add up all the valence electrons. Carbon has four valence electrons and each oxygen has six. Because there are three oxygens, that gives us 18 valence electrons for the oxygens. The negative two charge of carbonate tells us that carbonate has gained two electrons, so we need to add two more valence electrons for the charge. Adding that all up gives us a total of 24 valence electrons for carbonate. Next, the central atom is carbon because there's only one carbon and carbon tends to form more bonds than oxygen. We draw single bonds between carbon and each oxygen and in doing so, we have used up six valence electrons, which means we have 18 remaining for lone pairs. I normally put the lone pairs on the non-central atoms first. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, and 18. Next, we notice that carbon does not have an octet, so we need to turn lone pairs into double or triple bonds to fix that. In this case, because carbon already has six valence electrons, it only needs one additional bond. Now, every atom has eight valence electrons. This is the correct structure, although in reality, carbonate does exhibit resonance, which you can learn about in my video, Resonance Made Easy. We can indicate that this is a polyatomic ion by putting brackets around it with the overall charge in the top right. 
As we sit back and reflect on the Lewis structure of ammonium carbonate, notice that the entire procedure is the same as drawing the Lewis diagram of a molecule except for this step. The only difference is adjusting the number of valence electrons according to the charge. Let's try one last example that is a little bit more complicated. Hydrogen phosphate and dihydrogen phosphate are components of your blood buffer system, which helps keep your blood's pH between 7.35 and 7.45. Phosphates are also building blocks for many biomolecules. We could solve their Lewis diagrams individually, but it is useful to recognize that they are both derived from phosphate. So we can figure out the Lewis structure of phosphate and then add the appropriate number of hydrogens to it. Phosphate is PO4 3 minus. Please pause the video and try to calculate the number of valence electrons in phosphate. The phosphorus has five valence electrons and each oxygen has six, meaning there are 24 valence electrons from the oxygens. Plus, we need to add an additional three valence electrons from the negative three charge. This adds up to 32 valence electrons. Please pause the video again and try to draw the Lewis diagram of phosphate. Phosphorus is the central atom because there is only one and because it tends to form more bonds than oxygen. After drawing single bonds to all the oxygens, there are 24 valence electrons remaining. If we distribute those 24 valence electrons as lone pairs on all the oxygens, every atom has an octet and there is no need to form any double or triple bonds. Perhaps you have seen diagrams before that show phosphate with a double bond, but those are outdated and incorrect. High-level calculations support this diagram that we just drew. Now, what should we do about the hydrogens? When a hydrogen is added to a polyatomic ion, it is added as an H+. That is, the hydrogen has no valence electrons. That's why the charge increases by one each time a hydrogen is added. Since it has no electrons, the hydrogen will bond to an atom with a lone pair, and that lone pair becomes a single bond to the hydrogen. For oxyanions, the hydrogen will typically bond to an oxygen, although in rare cases it can bond to a central atom with a lone pair. So these are the correct structures of hydrogen phosphate and dihydrogen phosphate. Once again, we can put them in square brackets and indicate the charge on the top right. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, or check me out at ketsbook.com. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to share them below and have a wonderful day.